Um, yeah, a couple of years earlier, in 2010, I believe, um, I made, um, uh, so I, I wrote a paper during my MBA um, about alternative currencies. So I had actually looked at um, the kind of screwed up system that we have with not only money creation, but also the circulation of, of currency. And um, that's why I think it just immediately clicked for me when I saw this peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system and you know the white paper and all the discussions back then, it, it kind of makes sense. That is Dustin Hoffman, and this is episode 34 of the Blockchain Pro podcast. to episode 34 of the Blockchain Pro podcast. I'm Adriana Bellotti, and today's guest is Torsten Hoffman. Torsten is an award-winning filmmaker and the mind behind Bitcoin, the end of money as we know it, and Cryptopia, Bitcoin, blockchains, and the future of the internet. These are two of my favorite crypto documentaries, and I am psyched for you to get to know Torsten. So let's do it. Hi, Torsten. Hello to Australia. How are you? I'm all right. How are you? Yeah, what a crazy bit, uh, what a crazy year it's been for all of us, right? I know it's been. I mean, it's been crazy here, but also very quiet. Uh, where uh, you have been, you know, toting around Europe. I think things are a little bit crazier over there, aren't they? Yeah, at the, I mean, I think for uh, a long period of time, uh, this year has been uh, pretty okay in Europe, especially in Germany, where I spent um, most time. But at the moment, at the height of winter, yeah, it's getting pretty bad while you guys are opening up. And I think life is pretty much back to normal, right, in, in Sydney and Melbourne. Oh, yeah, we've had a few cases pop up um, just before Christmas. So there is like a very mild lockdown in Sydney right now. Uh, but up until then, there were no community transmissions, so pretty much everybody was just mm. living their lives. So we'll see yeah. how the next few weeks will pan out. All right, so let's get into it. Do you wanna give us a little bit of background about how did you become a filmmaker? Yeah, sure. Um, so uh, I started a business about eight or nine years ago in the media distribution space. So I represented many filmmakers, documentary makers, most mostly, and um, you know took their films and then tried to sell it to Netflix or to Amazon or to um, broadcasters all around the world. And um, when I heard about Bitcoin, that was 2013. Um, it was kind of it, it kind of clicked for me because I had a background in in finance as well. And it was kind of clear to me, oh, this is um, what I should do my own first documentary on. Oh. And even though it was pretty amateur, pretty low budget, um, it was definitely, you know, my, my passion, like two of my passions kind of met. So the documentary world and the, and the uh, yeah, finance and the Bitcoin world. And um, yeah, I was actually pretty surprised of, of how um, this first film, so we're talking about um, 2014 now, the making of it, and then the release was 2015. And the, the first film is called Bitcoin, The End of Money as We Know It. And it went, went surprisingly well and my new one cryptopia film is uh, what i would call much more professional much more bigger and ambitious um, but i'm sure we'll, we'll get into that uh, a bit later okay so you see i've known you for many years but i did not know that bitcoin was the thing that inspired you to make your first documentary yeah and you and you know i mean you have you have people on, on your podcast right i mean people get inspired and then suddenly change their careers or start a podcast or write a book right and for me it was kind of uh, logical uh, to make a documentary because i already was in that space uh, more or less right so uh, yeah that's that's kind of my my rabbit hole uh, story so what was it about bitcoin that sort of like sparked this desire to tell the story um, yeah, a couple of years earlier, in 2010, I believe, um, I made, um, uh, so I, I wrote a paper during my MBA um, about alternative currencies. So I had actually looked at um, the 
kind of screwed up system that we have with not only money creation, but also the circulation of, of currency. And um, that's why I think it just immediately clicked for me when I saw this peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system and even the white paper and all the discussions back then, it, it kind of makes sense because I mean, my paper back in the day um, only talked about um, paper money, you know, like, like, let's say there's a city, right? And the city wants to promote local businesses. So they create their own city dollars or, um, uh, you know, different um, um, local currencies, but paper. And that those paper currencies then circulate within the community uh, and which, which kind of helps local businesses. Um, so the, um, the money stays in the community. Basically, that's, that's the basic idea. And then there's different ways of negative or positive in interest rates and deflation and all that kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, so the, the whole thing put digitally and, and globally, I mean, that kind of, for me, was immediately that use case was clear, which actually, funny enough, um, that use case really hasn't panned out in, in Bitcoin, right? I mean, it hasn't really um, um, transformed the, the internet commerce in, in any big way. Um, many new, um, new use cases have come up, but that was the one that kind of inspired me, for sure. It's like the, the internet was one big community already, just was lacking a currency. Yeah, absolutely. That, I mean, that, that, is, that is one of my favorite quotes as well. And, you know, the internet as well. I mean, that, that we, we wouldn't have known uh, in the 70s or 80s or 90s how it's going to pan out, right? And it's just natural that these technologies, um, you know, are, are created with one vision and then form and morph and, and, and change and just become bigger and bigger. And I think we're talking today at a new all-time high um, again. So, yeah, it's, it's just incredible, that journey. Oh, this, this past week was like one a new all-time high pretty much every day yeah and and you know I've, i was recently on another podcast and you know people were pretty excited about the bull run i'm like yeah well i've been to three prior bull runs it hasn't <laughs> really started yet <laughs> so i mean it is i mean obviously great to see but we've just kind of um, passed the last all-time high right and and when it gets really crazy i mean we're going to see doubling and tripling of, of today's uh, prices and that's when the volatility and then when it gets uh, scary right some people are just weak hands <laughs> and they get they get scared and i think um the the people that are old, older and longer in the space are kind of a bit more uh, relaxed about these uh, daily swings <laughs> yeah just sit back and enjoy the the chart go chart going up and down <laughs> yes <laughs> okay so what is your favorite thing about making documentaries now you've made two yeah look um it's just super super um rewarding right to work on something hard for two years plus and then um Two years later, people pick up on it and say, oh, this is my favorite quote from the film, or oh, I just saw this and bought my first Bitcoin, or oh, um, recently an, an African um, consortium of, of consultants approached me and said, oh, we want to do this um, blockchain-based currency in our African country, maybe you can help us. You know, like things materialize and, and, and you, you basically have an impact um, for years to come. And that's, that's just incredible because, you know, th this, this kind of started you know, as, as a project, uh, like all projects, right? So, um, I, I think of, of an idea and, and write the script and then yeah, two or three years later, it, it's become this bigger and bigger thing. So I'm, I'm pretty proud of, of, especially Cryptopia. I think Cryptopia really turns out to have a pretty lasting impact, I think. Oh, you know, Bitcoin, the end of money, as we know it, is one of my, still to this day, one of my favorite Bitcoin documentaries. It's just so good. Well, and it, it stands the test of time, like... It's from four, five, six years ago? Six years ago. Now. Yeah, we, we started making it um, January 2014. Yeah, so it's, it's literally seven years uh, when we started the, the shooting. And I, I think we were clever to really look at the history of money and, and, and the fundamentals and not too much um, about Bitcoin and the technology and the news and all the scandals because that would all be um, outdated. I mean, there's a little bit of stuff that I would maybe do different. And of course, I would do it at a different um, budget level and things like that. But I mean, it is a good... Um, uh, theoretical or historical look at money so it's a good um, way to maybe start your journey into that space um, and Cryptopia is obviously much much bigger uh, production and, and, and it talks about the blockchain industry as, as a whole which didn't exist in 2014 and now it's become this yeah, trillion dollar kind of uh, industry. So how many hours does it take to make a documentary like that a one hour documentary and um, what was the difference between the end of money and Cryptopia, like, did you have to, too many more hours filmed? How did that work out? 
Yeah, I mean, you know, there's different approaches. I mean, there's documentary that that um, uh, work on thousands of hours of archives and turn it into a one-hour film, or other people just, um, you know, have much less footage. It really depends on the project. There's no uh, golden rule. But for us, I think it was each time it was maybe 50 or 60 hours of footage. Um, and then the the... the you know the challenge is basically how do you cut down and um, <laughs> yes. someone like an, an Andreas Antonopoulos for example he's my, my, my favorite um, example he's just so good and so polished and so um, uh, you know good with words and good on camera that, that is, it just hurts to cut every, everything that he says right but at the end of the day we only probably have him for two minutes out of two hours of footage so it, it's it's painful but um, I yeah, I, I'm going to say something a little bit controversial um, that maybe not, not everybody will, will quite agree with, but as a, donkey, a documentary maker, my job isn't necessarily to convey information. You can, you can read that better and faster, or you, that's what where podcasts and YouTube channels are coming. So um, a, a documentary like Cryptopia is also meant to entertain, right? So what I'm actually looking for is those funny little lines, those those little moments where um, you know somebody really shows emotion or um, uh, you know passion or uh, disgust, right? Or, or like like those those little uh, moments that we try to get on on camera. So that's what it is, is about, especially for Cryptopia. I think you you can see that. Like when you asked, um, what's his name? Should Satoshi Light? What was the shit coin? Was you that did that? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, that's a, that's a funny thing. And, and actually for, for Cryptopia, we, we basically left a little bit of the filmmaking and you can see the crew, you can see me behind camera asking tough questions or funny questions. And then, and then yeah, uh, uh, Charlie Lee just um, uh, had a, a nice little smile. And he's, and he's you know, such a, such a quiet and reserved and like when he talks, there's almost no emotion in his face. But that was like a moment, yeah, where you can see um, him smiling. So yeah, exactly right. <laughs> Yeah, that was a good, that, that's one of my favorite moments of that movie. Um, so what are you working on currently? What have you been up to this year? Yeah, so I'm, I'm still working on um, promoting um, Cryptopia, which has been, gone very, very well. So we have now um, 300 film festival um, uh, invitations. Um, the biggest one and the most important one was Doc Edge, which is an Academy Award um, qualifying event. So that was uh, the, being selected there was definitely, uh, you know, a big, big um, yeah, goal for me. Um, and then now, like all these smaller film festivals, we, uh, we released it on our website in May, then on Amazon uh, globally in September maybe um, and now we're starting to do TV deals um, so uh, we're negotiating with I mean you won't believe this like uh, Sweden Norway Russia um, Croatia Japan and there must be two or three others that I'm forgetting now so I mean um, yeah, yeah film like this is not only for the internet and and online um, you know VOD but also can reach millions of people on t uh, traditional broadcast um, what I personally don't like about the TV version is uh, we had to cut down, right? You have to cut down a feature length um, cinema version into a um, TV hour um, where a lot of the good stuff, a lot of the details, a lot of the inside baseball gets lost um, because you have to, um, you know, try to make it for a bit more um, mainstream um, audience. And then other things, you know, like um, I just started a little... Um, blockchain course, um, like for people who want to know more about it. Um, I'm basically using footage from both of my films to explain, okay, what is, uh, what are the central banks thinking? What, what is an ICO? Um, so it's, it's a bit more informational and a bit more, um, uh, yeah, like a course, not a, not an entertaining doc documentary, but really a, a teaching um, thing. But to me, that, to me, that feels like a natural progression, right? You already have everything. You just have to cut it in a different way. That, that's correct. Uh, that's correct. And, and I'm, I've been um, on this um, mission, basically, to promote uh, these entrepreneurial filmmaking projects. Um, and, and I think both of my films are good examples. So you, you identify a, a niche audience, in this case, you know, the, the Bitcoin and crypto community, um, and uh, create a product targeted for this group. And, and, and we actually did change the film quite a lot. I mean, you remember in, in Sydney when we did an event, it, it really wasn't ready and, and, and people weren't happy with this or that. And, you know, there was some, some issues with the audio, with the sound, I don't remember. And then you, you really work on it for more than a year, right? And then you have a product that people like and I can, I can see it based on IMDb ratings, on Amazon Prime, I think we are 4.8 uh, rating out of five. Um, so, so that has really gone well, right? And when you 
found that target market fit as a filmmaker, um, then what else can you create around it? And, and um, sometimes I'm, I do speaking events, sometimes I do these, these um, courses now, and um, you know, some of it will work, some of it won't work. But I think filmmakers or content creators are entrepreneurs. And uh, you, know, you as a podcaster know this uh, very well, obviously. Have you started thinking about your next movie? Um, look, I have, but it's just such a tough and <laughs> long journey, um, and it's it's hard to to you know make make the production funds uh, back on this one. Um, so yes, I have, and I have big plans for next year, but I, I'm not sure whether I can fund it to be honest. Uh, so you know, for people listening in, I think you did um, Indiegogo or something similar. Yeah, like, Kickstarter. Yeah, yeah, Kickstarter. Yes, for for both of them or just for Cryptopia? For both of them. Um, and for, for uh, the end of money, it was basically uh, most of the budget. Um, I don't know, 30% of the budget and the rest came from out of my pocket. And for Cryptopia, it was maybe a smaller uh, proportion, but this crowdfunding is actually very important. Again, audience building, you, you mm -hmm. kind of get feedback from that audience. And then that enabled me to go to Screen Australia, which is a film commission, you know, um, government grant, basically. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that then enabled me to go to a German broadcast and say, why don't you um, get the German rights um, uh, in exchange for some money? So, so it mm -hmm. really builds on top and again that's that goes back to that entrepreneurial like yeah filmmaking as a business kind of idea because the kickstarter sort of like proves to you know this grant giving organizations that there is you know backing behind it people really want to see that story made right 100% right. And my first film already proved, uh, look, I, I reached that many uh, people in that many countries and it, in one of few awards. I know the space. I'm, I'm, I have a network in this industry, right? Um, I have access to, to some of the VIPs. And so the, the second one was easier to make in, in many ways. And now my question is, should I do another one in the, the blockchain industry, right? Because I can, I can leverage this reputation and, and brand. Mm -hmm. Or... Uh, should I maybe cover another industry and another technology? I don't, what, what do you think? What, what should I do next? <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, you put me on the spot there. I have to give it a good think about it so I can, you know, give a proper answer. I don't know. I really love your first two crypto-related documentaries. So maybe selfishly, I'd say, yeah, stick to it. <laughs> yeah, but there's so many know. interesting stories still developing, right? Yes, uh, you know, I think, you know, if you make a new documentary every five years, they're all going to be very different from each other. Yeah, yeah, such a good point. And, and I, I do have to say, I, I don't know whether your audience knows this, but you have been like instrumental in, in, in this filmmaking, actually. So you, you helped me with a few script bits here and there, you know, in, in the making. So I think you're officially a script consultant. You, you helped me tremendously with that um, test screening in, in Sydney, which was a lot of fun. Um, but I'm, I'm actually most thankful for your work on the Portuguese uh, translation. You just, um, you know... <laughs> Put, put your hand up, volunteered, and now we have a Portuguese subtitle version. I still haven't really started marketing it in, in, in Brazil or in, in Portugal, but um, let, let's maybe do that in the next couple of months. And, and again, it's another example of, um, look, uh, this, is a, this is a project. We don't know whether it works. You know, we, we both invested some time in it, and maybe we can reach um, hundreds, thousands, or tens of thousands of people in that market. So I'm really looking forward to that. Oh, hopefully you will. Um, the next step from the, from the subtitles is when it gets like... A huge, to be a huge success in a country like Brazil, you have to have it dubbed <laughs> because some people yeah. don't really like, you know, reading subtitles. So that's the next step. But I know a lot of people, they can help with that as well. But you know yeah, what? I, I, this, I'm too, so, sorry, sorry yeah, to yeah. interrupt you. I'm, I'm actually doing these um, dubbed versions now for Germany, for, of German, French, and Spanish. And yeah, let's see which other markets are, are interested. I mean, again, that, that could be a whole full-time job for the next year. And let's see which one uh, work out or not. Yeah, that's interesting. I was just going to say that you are helping me kick, kick my like bucket list things because I wanted to have my name on, you know, as you know, on a film. And now uh, I've done the, 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 the subtitle, so I'll take. <laughs> Thank you, Thorsten. Um, all right. So what advice would you give to people wanting to work in this film documentary making space? 
Yeah, so um, I mean, there has never been a better time, right, to, to make content or to, to make doc documentaries. So the, the advice is just start, start doing something, whether it's a TikTok channel or a YouTube channel, which you can, you know, literally with zero budget and just with your smartphone, you can start creating um, uh, content and find your audience. Um, I, I think it's the wrong approach to, you know, go to film school for five years and then wait for your big feature film or documentary, get, get funding um, from some someone from out of nowhere for a hundred thousand dollars that, that that doesn't um, happen i think you, you need to start small entrepreneurial find your niche find your your strengths and and then go with it i, I think i really think it's easier now than ever plus i mean you know all these platforms i mean just just look at netflix and amazon and all these other platforms that are coming up they need content so um yeah just just go about and start and now that you've made two movies and a course about bitcoin and blockchain do you still love Bitcoin? What's what's the how is it looking for you? Yeah, look, I, I won't lie that um, I also had my period where, you know, I was experimenting with a lot of other um, uh, coins and, and played around with it. But, you know, first of all, as a filmmaker, I, I really didn't have much money to invest or to, to play around with in the first place. But um, I think the longer I'm in that space, the clearer it becomes that Bitcoin is the only um, uh, Kind of viable digital asset in terms of investing. Um, I'm obviously a big fan of Ethereum. I think that one has also find its uh, product market fit. I mean, there's so many businesses being built on top of um, Ethereum, obviously. Mm -hmm. And sure, there are probably hundreds of other legit projects, and that they they have some sort of value or some sort of use case. But me as a I mean, I'm not watching these markets full time and I'm not interested in trading or anything like that. So, I mean, as, a, as someone um, interested in investing or like um, making bets on the future of finance, I think those two are really standing apart from everything else. And um, I don't know, was that controversial or what, what do you think? <laughs> uh, I, no, I don't think it's controversial at all. I think there are some other projects that are making headways in the business arena because as an evolution mm. of database technology, that's what that's they have a place uh, to be. Uh, but I guess for the regular people to just, you know, try and understand Bitcoin is the best place to start. No. Yeah, 100% agreed. All right. Um, okay. Any general advice for, you know, people wanting to play with Bitcoin or, you know, just getting into crypto? Yeah. So, uh, I mean, your audience is mostly Australian or is it a global audience? Because uh, I think it, it depends a little bit. Mostly Australian, I'd say. Yeah, I mean, in Australia, we're actually pretty lucky because um, it's, uh, we have so many um, very good, um, well-functioning exchanges, um, pretty easy to, to work with. I mean, Independent Reserve is just one of, of, one of many um, where maybe it's, it's just, you know, just sign up, play around with it, um, even if it's just $100, um, and that would be maybe one advice. Um, there's so many podcasts like, like yours uh, and that way you can d um, dig deeper. Um, if you want to check out my course, definitely check out the, the two documentaries. I mean, they're, they're both on Amazon Prime at the moment, so it's basically for free. Um, otherwise, if you want to um, uh, buy them for you know $5 or $10 um, on my website, so that's also fine. Um, yeah, there's so much good content out there. And um, yeah, just, just get, get your um, journey started. And, and I think maybe one other piece of advice is um, it's, it's sort of similar how maybe in the early 2000s where kind of the internet was um, slowly creeping into all businesses and all industries and all jobs and the blockchain in, in some way or another is kind of doing the same to a lot of jobs and a lot of um, I think if, um, you know industries i mean certainly finance but maybe some others so i think um even if you're not interested in investing or you you, you know you don't have the capital and um, think about how it might actually impact you how, how might your industry change how um, might you want to skill up you know to be prepared for this kind of new decentralized um uh, way of doing things and uh, some will pan out some will not pan out so i'm not saying uh, blockchain will change everything but blockchain will certainly change a lot and bitcoin will certainly change a lot that is great advice thank you so much and when are you coming back to australia well um whenever the country will have me back i mean um <laughs> and, and let me back out i don't know that the travel um planning is so so difficult at the moment but uh, when i'm in sydney i'll definitely stop by I, I hear you have good restaurants in your area 
We do. And I just moved as well. I'll tell, I'll tell you all about it offline. Thank you so much for talking to, to me today. And, you know, uh, I will see you again very soon, hopefully. Thanks so much. Thank you. And that was the always entertaining Torsten Hoffman. As a quick footnote, I really recommend that you watch Bitcoin, the end of money as we know it, if you haven't already. In this documentary, Torsten covers the history of money in depth, from bartering and using commodities up until the current money printing era. And he ends by exploring the Bitcoin attributes that make it a fiat antidote. It's a really great primer for what's currently happening in the finance world. Torsten films are available on Amazon Prime and Bitcoin, the end of money as we know it, is also available on YouTube. If you don't have a Prime subscription and want to watch Cryptopia, head over to his website where you can buy it directly from the source. All the links are in the description, including the link to Torsten's new crypto course. If you have a question or want to connect with Torsten, head over to Twitter and ping him at TorstenHQ. For guest requests, feedback, or just to connect and say hi, hello, find me on Twitter at Abelotti. Remember to follow the podcast account too at blockchainpro underscore. That's all for now. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Have a wonderful day and I will see you at the next vlog. Bye.